Today on the fast lane car or is a truck, we're going to answer that age old question what's better off road? Is it a truck or is it a car? And I'm driving the Silverado, which is a truck. Tell me, what are you driving? I'm driving the Toyota FJ Cruiser, but dad. I'm not really sure we're going to answer your question. There's just too many variables. The type of truck, the type of car, the type of off-road terrain. So I'm not sure we'll answer it, but one thing I am sure of, we're going to have a fun off-road adventure in, check this out, the snow and maybe the mud. All right, we're going to try to answer that question. Let's get to it. You're like three feet in the air. All right, Dad, let's keep the sheet metal off the rocks. That is a steep, steep angle. Gotta get, gotta get a little bit of open here, Dad. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Come on, Chevy! This is the 2020 Chevy Silverado Trail Boss, a proper off road truck with proper off road tires and proper off road lift. Basically, it's a big old V8 with five more gears than Tommy has and, well, two more cylinders, which should make this the ideal vehicle to take off-road. But it isn't the ideal vehicle to take off-road because it's the size of a county and it weighs more than the Bismarck. It's just, it's too big in every dimension. What you need is something like this, a body-on-frame SUV, but a relatively compact one like this 2014 Toyota FJ Cruiser. It's got a V6, no V8, it only has a 5-speed automatic transmission, but it's got all the off-road tech you'll ever need, and more importantly, you'll fit through the trail, and that's really important. Alright mister, my uh, car is smaller than your truck, why don't you lead the way? forge a path into the wilderness here. You know that we just had our first big snow and it's definitely showing up here. Yeah, I usually don't like to off-road when there's a lot of snow, but... It's not too crazy yet, so I think that Webster Pass is the perfect way to figure this out because we start out kind of going down a trail, right? And then we get into the rock crawly bit so we can kind of do a head-to-head -head challenge. And then finally, at the top, we end up on a shelf road. It will be a little bit interesting when, uh, uh, the snow is uh, blocking parts of the trail. We'll see how the traction is on both of these vehicles with the different tires. Oh, what's it feel like, dude? Yeah, it feels good. It's got a really nice ride. Uh, that's probably the best part about it. It shares a lot of components with the 4Runner, but it's much softer, at least, seat of the pants than a 4Runner, which is nice. But it is impossible to see the rocks that you come up to just because it's like uh, driving a little mini bunker. Yeah, I was gonna say the sight lines on this Silverado are atrocious, uh, but you know, if atrocious is a Silverado, then stupendously, horribly atrocious is the uh, FJ. I will say that it's nice having a proper selectable rear locking differential, unlike your G80, which is all kind of automatic. And I also have a cool thing called A-Track, which is advanced traction control, and that should help get me unstuck out of a lot of nasty situations, according to the Toyota people. Well, la dee da, dude, I've got off-road mode. Yeah, I'm not really sure what that does, to be honest, Dad. You know what's pretty crazy? The fact that we just paid 33500 for a car that is six years old and has 60,000 miles, which isn't much less than this truck is worth today after a year of owning it. That is pretty incredible. The most important piece of off-road tech out on the trail is not all those cool gizmos, it's actually the tires, and they both have good tires. The Silverado is running the Goodyear Wrangler Dirt Track, and the Toyota run is running the Cooper Discoverer AT. So they're both uh, going to have pretty good bite in the snow, but we'll see which one is better out in the, uh, the wet stuff in the snow. The Toyota FJ Cruiser is based on the 4Runner, and that means a couple things. First of all, it's body on frame, it's got all the forerunner positive attributes so it's got a lot of ground clearance and it's a solid rear axle but it also means it will run forever this four liter v6 is still in production today in the current forerunner and i'm gonna say the classic toyota fanboy thing let's do this comparison at 250 or 300 000 miles and see how that chevrolet is holding up but it's true 
This FJ is just so well made and you know that it'll just keep trucking down the trail for thousands of miles to come. You know, we've owned this truck for almost a year now. We've put on 13,569 miles. We've off-roaded it uh, in our series, no pavement needed. Uh, and I've grown to really like it. And of course, all of you guys out there are thinking, well, it's a Chevy and that's a Toyota. And so the reliability of that thing is off the scale. Whereas this thing, well, you know, it's gonna break, but it hasn't broken after, like I said, almost 14,000 miles. The only thing we've done to it, I think, is change the oil. That's pretty darn reliable. All right, we're gonna do your little mini game show that you like to do on these videos. So let's start out with four-wheel drive. The FJ Cruiser has a four high and a four low. I've got a four high and a four low. Yep, it's got a locking rear differential. I've got a kind of sort of locking rear differential. It's just manually not locking. It does it automatically. Okay, what about front suspension? Independent on the Toyota? I got independent. What about this? I have three windshield wipers. I have a red truck that says Trail Boss. There you go. Oh my! Looks like we can need an icebreaker for our uh, little river crossing here. It's pretty icy. It's looking a little chunky. It's looking a little chunky. This should be interesting. All right, well, let's see how the Toyota does. I'm going to engage my A track. So I push this button. An A track is uh, basically a, a way for the vehicle to send power to the wheels with traction and um, keep power flowing where it needs to go for the best possible traction. Now, coming down into this icy, uh, icy river. It's a funky noise. It's always worrying, even if you have a used vehicle, but it's brand new to you that you're going to do some damage. You really don't want to break this uh, FJ Cruiser. Luckily, the ice is moving away from the uh, underside of the vehicle. Okay, coming up on the end here, a little bit of throttle. Oh, no slippage whatsoever. Pretty good result from the Cooper tires. Really cool. I've got a new name for this truck. What? The Ice Boss. The Ice Boss? Yeah, yeah, Chevy. <laughs> That's a free one. The Chevy Silverado Ice Boss. There you go. It's like an icebreaker. <laughs> Did you know that we actually test vehicles the way they were designed to be used? Yeah, I know. It seems crazy, but there's a lot of reviews out there where you see the reviewer in front of the vehicle, you see him pointing at stuff, you see him expounding on his opinion, but at the end of the day, really what matters is this. Does this trail boss actually rule the trail? Does the FJ actually do well off-road? And that is hard because, well, not only is it cold out here and I'm starting to freeze, but we put these trucks in danger, which means that they can get broken. And sometimes that's the only way that you can actually test a vehicle to its utmost. Yep, TFL, independent and honest off-road reviews. All right, Tommy, right now I'd say it's all even. We know that the truck and the car are both good at trail running and they make pretty darn good icebreakers. <laughs> yeah, for that, uh, that, that little stream crossing. So now it's time for a little bit of rock crawling. We've got these kind of, well, you know, typical cantaloupe sized rocks. Uh, we're gonna go up this hill. Why don't you go first and show off that infamous or is it famous Toyota a track system? See if it actually handles this uh, rock crawly bit. Sounds good. So I'm going to go low range drive, a track on, handbrake off. I'm out of breath. We're at like I can see what my watch says. We're at eleven thousand. 120 feet above sea level. Now going up this hill, I do actually have this pretty cool little thing here. Let me show you really quick. I do have a little inclinometer here as well as a compass, so I'll uh, I'll let you know how steep it gets. So let's see how he does going up this pretty rocky and steep hill. Hard to tell how steep it is, but maybe you can tell by my breathing. It's pretty steep. The FJ Cruiser was available with a manual transmission. This one does have the automatic and typically the automatic transmission is a little bit easier to drive off-road because you don't have to worry about modulating a clutch pedal. But tons of traction up through that little rocky area with the cantaloupe-sized rocks, as my dad calls them. This is where it gets narrow, so this is why I'm really glad I have 
the SUV versus the full-size pickup truck. Ooh, it's hard to see what's right over that front end though, because the hood is high and the windshield is small. Definitely getting into a little bit of snow here. Let's see how the traction control is able to distribute power. We are pretty much a 20 degree incline here. So you can hear a track working. That's what that uh, <laughs> tennis shoe in the dryer noise is, but it, we just walked up that. That was amazing. Even in the dry, I struggled a little bit up that hill in our brand new Land Rover Defender. So the fact that this was able to do that no problem is pretty ace. So now I'll try the same thing going down the mountain. So this 2014 does have parking sensors and look at this. The most useless backup camera. Well, I shouldn't say useless. It does serve a purpose. It's just tiny. Look at that little thing. I don't know what I'm uh, driving into with that puppy. So I'm going to now select first gear on the transmission just for a little bit of extra control. That's foot off the throttle now, first gear. I don't believe I have hill descent control here. A little quick actually with engine braking, so I'm gonna apply some brakes. Just gentle application of the uh, brake pedal. Don't wanna engage a slide because then I could potentially lose steering. Would be no good. Oh, picking up a wheel there for sure. Oh, you're in the air, Tommy. Do you have hill descent control? I do not. You don't have hill descent control, but you have a track. Oh, look like, at that! Comments at this point are like you just said a track like, uh, a thousand times. You're like three feet in the air. Uh huh. No solid front axle to articulate, so less articulation for sure than the Wrangler. But that's okay. Seems to be doing a pretty good don't job. Don't slide into the hill. Working hard, this vehicle. At least I should say the tires. Trying to balance too much side tilt. We are at a 21 degree side tilt. Trying to balance that and sliding into the wall and dealing with the snow all at the same time. But I think we did it. Woohoo! Good work, Toyota. You know how to build a vehicle that can tackle some rocks. Let me tell you what. All right, Dad, let's keep the sheets metal off the rocks. You know what's crazy, dude? When I'm in small walls, I can't go into off-road mode. I will never understand that. Yeah, Chevy, what were you thinking? So, my turn uh, to go up the hill. Um, I don't have a track, but I do have hill descent control, which I'll use on the way down. But right now, really all I need is my big toe. I am in four low, uh, and hopefully this uh, G80 will lock up as needed. The truck's kind of bounding over these cantaloupe-sized uh, boulders, picking my way through it. And it does get a little tight up here, so I'm a little worried about that because, uh, yeah, this is where the size of the vehicle certainly makes a big difference. Uh, but so far, so good. I can't really see where the front wheels are at because, well, Jimmy decided to do a big front end, like, fist into the wind. Which is cool from the outside, but not so great from the inside here. All right, here we go. That is a steep, steep angle. Oh yeah, this is getting a little Ooh, tippy. He's uh, staying out of the snow though. That's an interesting route. A little slippy. All right, let's see what happens here. Come on, truck. Oh, no problem. Nice driving too. He kept a little bit of momentum through the snow. Traction wasn't an issue. That just walked right up that. But that was pretty easy. Hill descent control is engaged. Come on down. Whoa, that's too fast. That's too fast. I think I'm going to use my brakes. This is the part where it gets really sketchy. You'll be just fine. Oh boy. I'm a little nervous about this. Longer wheelbases in a lot of cases are better for these scary descents and big articulation. Whoa. You slipped off a rock there. They're also better for really big ascents. There goes the left rear wheel. Ooh, a little bit of articulation there. Definitely maxed out. Whoa, it's a little tippy, Tommy. Two or three inches there. You're good. It's a little tippy. Just 
got to make sure it doesn't slide oh, into that rock wall. Oh, little seesaw. Oh. <laughs> Dad, you're close to that wall. You're really close to the wall. Thank you. Whoa. The other thing about big trucks is that they're big and heavy. Just barely cleared that, huh? Well, yeah, that did well. And the traction control slash hill descent control is working as advertised. So now my foot, see, completely off. And the truck is doing all the braking. I'm just steering, which is nice, which is really nice. Looks like he's gonna finish the rock crawl section then we wind our way up the trail and then along these switchbacks to that saddle between these two mountains and that's where the finish is. Let's see if we can make it up there without getting stuck in snow at 11,000 feet above sea level. And now of course we come to the, well, least favorite part of our test and that is of course the shelf road. You know how much I love shelf roads, especially with snow. Not my favorite either, but I think we'll be able to crawl our way up as long as we take it slow and are uh, not reckless on the throttle. I was really a little concerned about, you know, the size of this truck, uh, but at least on this uh, pass, it's doing just as well as that FG. Uh, and usually bigger does not mean better when you're off-road. Plus, you got more room for uh, stretching out. More cubbies for your snacks, and you could uh, haul stuff in the bed like an ATV if you wanted. But I think my ride's better, I really do. That truck has to tow 9,500 pounds, so it's got a pretty stiff springs. This only tows 4,700, so... It's got nice squishy springs. Heck, I could put you in my bed, dude. Yeah, hold up, it's not that starting to get a little bit slippery and mushy the higher we go up toward the top of the mountain. Oh. Wow, okay, four low, eight track engaged. Come on, figure it out. Figure it out. It's definitely working hard. There we go. Ooh, it's getting slippy. Let's see if I can get it up here to more solid ground. There we go. Nice work, Toyota. I think this is about as much snow as I'd want to do uh, before uh, I would uh, turn around and head back down because uh, you forget just how heavy these vehicles are when they start sliding. It's sometimes very difficult to keep them on the trail. Luckily, we've got you know good tires, but you know you're certainly down in terms of control and in terms of well bravery for me. Grip, grip, grip. Come on, Toyota. Eight tracks working. Oh, man. Gotta, gotta get a little bit of oomph through here, Dad. Beans! There we go. Yeah, there you go. Channel your inner Nathan, Tommy. But there's a cliff forming. I'm, I'm coming right behind you. Oh, come on, Chevy! Ah! You know, the problem is this is north facing, so it holds a lot more snow. For all of you skiers out there, you know what I'm talking about. Hey, Tommy. I don't like this. This is getting really sketchy. Well, we've got a big snowdrift here and bigger snowdrifts to come. I'm gonna cruise through here at a steady speed. I'll get you. Did you get stuck? I did get a little stuck. Let me try backing up. I'll give it one more whirl. See if I can get any higher. Yeah, I mean, now if we have to back down the shelf road, it's gonna be a buck puncher. You look pretty darn stuck. Alright, try the rear locker. Alright, A-track and rear locker 
full throttle. Grip, 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 grip. Ah, good work, Toyota. All right. Uh -oh, another one full throttle. It's not working. Come on, Toyota. Oh, bummer. And there's even bigger ones up ahead. And um, trust me, it doesn't look like it on camera, but that's a pretty big cliff. So, uh, yeah, maybe we back her down. You know, there's nothing I like more than backing down through a snow drift on a shelf road with a well, at least you have a backup camera that doesn't look like a potato. <laughs> Alright, so... Car or truck? Well, I think snow wins this time. I don't think it really matters. It comes down to tire and uh, yeah, once it gets deep enough and it's steep enough, you're just stuck. I'm gonna say it comes down to not only tire, but you know, what car and what truck. Sure, and what, what, what size your uh, lower, uh, your, your family jewels are as well. But I'm gonna take the truck. You know why, Tommy? Why? Because I got heated seats. Yeah, Toyota doesn't have it. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for watching. I think we've managed to prove that uh, this is quite the adventure. And high altitude off-roading may have come to an end this year in Colorado because it just gets way worse the further up we go. All right, thanks for watching, guys. And remember, check out TFL Car, TFL Truck, TFL Off-Road for honest and independent. No, sorry, independent and honest reviews. See you next time. Ciao. Ha! This is why I love trucks. It's this magic button right here. Check it out. Heated seats. <sighs> yeah, I think Tommy's right. We won't be doing much more off-roading this year in Colorado. Time to move to Moab, at least for the winter. Check it out. An actual real camera, which uh, when you're doing sketchy stuff like backing down a shelf road in the snow in a full-size truck, comes in super handy.